<laughs> Hello, we are live. We are live right now. This is Massachusetts Beer Reviews. I am Thomas Metal 75, and this is your Massachusetts Beer Review. Today is special edition. We are enjoying, um, we are presenting with the Louisiana Beer Reviews and with the John the TV Rambler in Mobile, Alabama, and myself, and possibly John Sharon from Zone One Beer Reviews. We are um, presenting the beers that we are enjoying currently with week seven of the NFL right now. Hello, uh, folks. Hello. Just, good evening. And I am enjoying this evening. I had a, uh, I made a steak dinner with the Patriots game and some green beans. Yeah. I'm enjoying the uh, Great Divides Yeti Imperial Stout. It is their stout aged in whiskey barrels, their oak aged version. 2050. You are so bad. Not bad. From Bottled no. on October 16th, 2015. It is 12.5% alcohol by volume. And I opened it yesterday when I got back home and I did my own personal beer review of it on my page. And I got. You are so fancy. Thank you. I'm so fancy. Yes. You, are so, you are so fancy in your mustache. No one says you have a Hitler mustache, but every time I had a mustache, people said it looked like Hitler, so I shaved oh, it last. I'll never get rid of it. Mm -mm. I like it. I can't even have a Hitler mustache these days. Okay, but no. anyway. <laughs> what are you? All right, what are you? Are you enjoying the Paps Blue Ribbon? Yeah, sure. Right. I, like that. I promised that I, was, I would always brag on their beers. Um, and so let me brag on their beer. All right, go right ahead. Actually, Pat sent me that bumper sticker up there that says, what do you have? They sent me, uh, that's right. They sent me the t-shirt. They sent me the cap. They sent me the bottle opener. They sent me the, <laughs> the doilies. They sent me so much swag. I'm drinking Pat's Blue Ribbon. Well, actually, I'm finished. And uh, I got this for, uh, I went to Food for Even. <laughs> yes. And I, got, and I got it for uh, $5.29 after tax for the six pack, which is not bad. Uh, I think that's standard price around the country. That's sort of what I get. It. That's the kind of price I get it for in Massachusetts. And Okay, so hello, John. Hello, Pittsburgh. Sorry. Hello, Eric. <laughs> wait, wait. RC is saying, Rod is saying, send me a link. The link's above, Rod. The link is yeah. above. On the chat. I'll send oh, it down as a flag. Uh, yeah. No, Rod. Rod, the link is above you. Hey, um, so um, the Cubs won. Hello, Eric. Hello, Jean. Uh, I drank some port wine this morning. And, I, you know, it's 18% alcohol. And I was like, nah, I don't even feel it. And I laid down to take a nap. And I woke myself up snoring. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. It's true. Uh, well, yeah, I did a review of this. Uh, well, well, actually, uh, tell tell everybody that one viewer that's watching. Tell that one viewer what you are drinking right now, John. Uh, of course, everybody's most beloved beer, the one people love so much. Oh, there you go. And sometimes it is hated by society. The 16 ounce can right. of Bud Light. All right. Significant no. likes this. I know. <laughs> Kill the special effects now, Eric. Hey, I'll go overboard if I don't be careful. Bud Light is so bad that it's the most popular beer in the world. That's a sign that people hate it. What's yes. what is it, John? Here's Miller High Life on nightcap. This is my nightcap, okay? Oh. That's right. it. Oh, well. I had a Mickey's earlier, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but uh, yeah, during the um, I was watching uh, watching something else, and I was watching the Eagles and uh, Minnesota game, and so I said, "All right, uh, I had to get up early this morning, eight thirty hour time, to watch my Giants against the Rams from London." So um, that was on the NFL Network. Yep, it was on NFL Network. Yeah, so I watched that and um, I streamed it on my laptop. Watched the game, and uh, you know we we played well, but we still have little issues on offense. It wasn't the most clean game, most pretty game, but you the know, wins a win. 
Zach. Wait, there's echo. Echo. Where's the echo coming from? It might be John. Okay, I'm sorry about that, guys. I need to get my headphones, but I got no headphones on my ear. Um, Rush. What Rush said in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, you know, got some hearing issues, right? right? <laughs> Sean, you might yeah. just, just need to turn down your volume. Okay, hold on. Here we and go. Yes, Eric, what are you nice drinking today, Eric. John Sharon? Eric, nice shirt, buddy. Thank you. Hey, hey, John, how you doing? Good. It's a little so, contrast. Uh, Pat's Urban shirt and a oak a and a barrel aged Imperial Yeti. Yeah. All right. Very good. So I'm, <laughs> I, I'm from the uh, the uh, Braxton. October fuel. What? What's never that? Never, never seen that before. Yeah. So Where is it from? It's from a Braxton Brewing out of a uh, Cincinnati. It's uh one of a. Uh, it's a pretty good beer, really. You're about two hours from Cincinnati. Uh yeah, probably yeah. Hey, real fast before I forget, um, John, Sharon, and I were talking about, you know, we do the examinations on Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. um, yes. This may not appeal to anyone else, but we were talking about doing some Budweiser, Clamato, Chiladas, and some Modelo Especial Chiladas and a Tecate Michelada. Michelada. I don't know if people might say, oh, no. This is my excuse to quit the examination. Now I've got my out. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wouldn't drink those beers, no. Because you are prejudiced. I don't even like tomato juice. Yeah, if you, you don't like tomato juice, it would really not appeal to you. I tried a Bloody Mary once or twice in my time, and I can't get into that stuff even. Actually, actually, this, this beer is made in Covington. River from Cincinnati. It's where uh Oh in Kentucky. Jay, go ahead. I think Jay froze oh, up. No, I'm still there. I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So I was gonna right. say uh, I was gonna say um that's where I bought uh the last ever supply of half and rougher private stock. Oh uh, really? two years ago. Yeah, at, at Stadium Liquors. Somebody told me Stadium Liquors, that's a dump. Only bums go there. Well, hey, look, it seemed like a pretty good place for bums to go to. It had a big selection, so. <laughs> All right. Whatever works. So the far, I bought the Nefarious Milwaukee's bits. Ice there, too. Ooh. Nightmarish product. <laughs> hey, what what did you think about the uh, 4.0? I was going to bring that up. Well, I was shocked when I saw you post that, <laughs> honestly, because I was in – a town, Philadelphia border in 2010. Okay. Yeah. yeah. On and I was staying at Knights Inn, which is a pretty good uh, location there. Um, yeah. And yeah. In Pennsylvania, it's very strange. They don't have liquor stores. It's illegal. Yes. Uh, You're breaking up slightly. Only just breaking up slightly. Let me see something here. Um, I think there's a Google problem. Hold on a second. Can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. I was fooling around with fa uh, Facebook, and I think that was causing it. Oh, anyway, I um, was trying to catch up on all the cat pic pictures and the macaroni that people <laughs> eat every day. Um, <laughs> people have to post everything. Everything like, now I'm at the store. It's like, I needed to know that. Um. In fact, I don't even know who you are. You're my Facebook friend. I don't know you. But um, I have like 600 Facebook friends, 50 of which I actually know. But anyway, of whom I actually know. But anyway, um, <laughs> you, the only distributors can sell beer, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But now supermarkets can too somehow. But, but a restaurant can serve beer, okay? So what they do is they make a liquor store and they serve sandwiches and they call it a restaurant, but it's really a liquor store that just happens to serve sandwiches. There, and y'all can hear me. Yes. I went in there and uh, they had Schmitz. This was in 2010. Schmitz. I said, "Oh yes, I'm buying it." 
and then I hit one can up against the counter and, and it burst open and beer went everywhere. And then wow. I, I bought a uh, wow. six pack of pints of peels. Never heard of it. It's a beautiful beer. beer. Um, twice and both times on the same highway, US Highway 1 for some weird reason. I bought this six pack in uh, Connecticut. 2000 uh, 1996 see that the pint cans in 2010 and uh, then I saw the 40 Street legal I have to buy this bizarre item and they had the 40 ounce bottles you bottles and they had uh, uh, the 24 ounce can so I bought the can and I drank it and it tasted so strange I don't know what it tastes like now, six years later, but I'm telling y'all right now, I drank the whole thing. This was before I started doing video reviews. I have a written review on Beer Epic and Rapier. It made me feel sick for three days. And John, yeah, and I was not ripping on I was not ripping on your choice. I'm just telling you what happened to me. You know, it, it it's a fresh beer. It was recently uh canned. And, you know, I it, I thought it was different. It uh I'd put it up there as one of my top two or three malt liquors. Besides St. Ives, but you know, I mean, it was good, and I hope everybody can try it. Hey, if they can hear it. don't you find it looks like a dirty martini? Yeah, yeah, it looks like just it's a regular old freaking adjunct freaking malt liquor. I don't know. Look at that photo you posted. It's the same appearance I noticed. It's like brown <clears throat> and murky looking. Pour a bottle of mix. It ain't gonna be brown and murky looking. But it has, a, it has a distinctive flavor. Now, you can't say that 40 Street Legal tastes like anything else. And I think it's from La Crosse, right? Yeah. Yep. But, well, Monroe, which is liquor. Yeah. So. Oh, no. Minhas. That's worse. That's even more frightening. <laughs> yeah. But it's not bad. I mean, it was good. I'm glad you liked it. And I'm glad you posted it on the Malt Liquor uh, Project. Yeah. Plus regular beer support regular beer and on the very good web uh facebook page called zone one yep eric what you, what'd you say you're drinking barrel aged yeti yeah i got the uh i did a review of it last night so i won't you know go too too far into it but i'll give you a little synopsis of what i'm getting a, a day and not even a whole 24 hours later um they don't really specify what kind of barrels they are in, but they just say that they were aged for at least 12 months in whiskey barrels. And uh, it's been out for some time out of the refrigerator since yesterday. I did put a cap on it similar to the Nuclear Tactical Penguin from, um, oh, my God, what's their names there? From, uh, from Brewdog. Yeah, that's right, Brewdog. Yeah, they give you one of those to put on the – to put on the uh, bottle because it's such a big yeah, well that's like over 40 percent but i just am not drinking this with anybody so i decided to cap it and save it um i did get a nice pan head initially the, the head that was there died almost to nothing to that fine rim as you can see it's definitely black as night with just a tiny bit of the yellow t or the of the um ruby red tinges it definitely has the bourbon in the and the vanilla and the coconut and the chocolate notes and a little bit of coffee and roasted notes. What's the alcohol by volume? 12.5%. See, Eric, you know, it's so funny I see you drinking this beer because <laughs> they opened up a brewery the next town over from me in Jeffersonville called Red Yeti. And they, and uh, food, the brewery down here, about ten miles down the road from me. Wow! Because that that Yeti that is on that bottle that was there, that was actually. Oh, there. I remember that. I remember that case. They were talking about that on one of those. Yeah, it was the exact same. Yeah, the exact. They use the exact same Yeti as what they got on their bottle, so they sued them, huh. saying yeah. they can't use that anymore. Well, apparently they're still using it, so they must have not won that lawsuit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but anyways, you can definitely tell that it's 12.5%. It doesn't, I mean, it's got, if anybody's had any kind of high ABV Imperial Stouts or any kind of a barrel-aged Imperial Stout, higher ABV product, you, you, you kind of get, 
you kind of get that that full rich mouthfeel and that full body and that in, in that um higher alcohol percentage sort of a taste and a feel to it. I wouldn't say that it burns, nor does it go down really, really, really harsh. I think if you're not accustomed to this style of beer, or if you don't really like this style of beer, you might get taken back a little bit by how big the percentage kind of feels. But I think it's a nice warming beer. It's a good beer to just sip on. It's got those really good chocolate notes. It's it's almost like, I didn't even say it in my review yesterday, but it's almost like like a chocolate, like a flourless chocolate cake or something like that mixed in with that vanilla and coconut and some coffee notes and some roasted notes. But overall, this is pretty good. I forget what I paid for it, but whatever I paid for it was way too much for this product, I would have to say, entirely. I think it was was, more- was the beer like around maybe uh, 13 to uh, maybe $20? Uh, it was closer to 20 I think it was. Yikes. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a one-time deal. I'm going to maybe buy that. Or if I buy another beer that's like this one, either I'm going to split it with some friends and, you know, split the cost that way or buy it for a very special occasion. And I thought opening the beer yesterday and doing a review after the my friend's wedding and dedicating a beer review of this beer to them on their wedding day was a fine occasion of, you know, and reasoning to open the beer. So I think I gave it an A plus for what it is as a beer overall. I just don't think that there's a lot of times that I want to open up a beer like this and drink one unless I am either with a bunch of people or there's a special occasion because it is kind of an intense drinking experience, if you know what I mean. It's not for the faint of heart, if you will. So I end up giving it a B plus, a high B plus, and that's where I'm going to stick with it. Not my favorite style, but there's definitely a lot there and definitely a lot to appreciate in a beer like this. And you got to sip it and take your time. So it's sort of a knockout beer. Yeah, it can be really – It's I think to some people it can be really that way. If you are really, really, really into your Imperial Stouts and, and you like to read all of these beer advocate and rate beer scores that give it 100s and praise these kind of beers, these are the ones for you. But if you're not used to high – Oh. alcohol percentage thick beers you might be turned off by this and the price range hey, look you want to see what yeah it's like yes yeah, you want to see what wine i drank today you might gasp oh <laughs> i see is that the light pillar stuff uh jay do you really want to see okay um you think it's port what is jay taylor port um can okay. you see it it says taylor port wine yeah, uh, I bought it at Walmart, Ooh. and um, I had never had it before. I did a video for it. It was five five twenty nine plus tax. It was cheaper if you bought the for a port. Cheaper. Yes, yeah, cheap port wine. That is a cheap port. port. Is an old, I don't. It's an old style of wine from like the sixteen hundred. I, I don't know much about port, but I don't think that port has to have a certain. It has to have like thirty years of age for it to be considered port wine. <laughs> No, you don't. You don't. It's good though. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got a couple ports here from, uh, and they're freaking good. So the one I'm a, drinking is a low. I didn't the watch. One I'm drinking is sort of a low. Yeah, I didn't watch your review, but it's obviously you're saying it's not a really great product, right? I'm saying it doesn't cost a lot. Right. But I didn't say it wasn't a good product. It was five twenty eight for the bottle plus tax. Whew, wow! This company's been in business since eighteen eighty. Nation Brands, the same company that owns and that that handles the uh, Modelo brands in America. Oh, cool! Like Corona. So you better have about six hours because they own so many wines and uh, and beer brands. Uh, Constellation. In fact, you might have heard of Paul. Paul Masson brandy, but um, yeah, the jug wine. But it, yeah, I mean it's pretty good for what it is. You know, I'm sure, like I was saying, like John Sharon's about to go get some bottles. You can get port wines that are eighty ninety dollars a bottle. You know what I'm saying? Eighty ninety dollars a bottle. Yeah. Good stuff. I've never tried it. Oh, Rod J. Ladies, so y'all make fun of me. Rod J. Hello. What's going on? What are you drinking during the day here? 
It was what? What you got in your glass today? Uh, about to drink this Boulevard Brewing Tropical Pale Ale. Nice. So. Congratulations to your undefeated team. Hey, Rod. Uh, Rod yeah. yeah. College has been better than pro for me. Huh? I was saying about you. Oh, who's got Braxton there, my man? What's up? Hell yeah. You got that uh, Braxton from Covington. Nice. Yeah. So give us a link. Yeah, I guess this is from out in uh, Beer Whispers territory, what I'm drinking. Yeah. He gets a lot of Boulevard beers. Give us a lay down of that beer of yours. Oh, this one? Um, I only had I had one last night from him. I ended up getting a six-pack for like five ninety nine. so nice. it was a nice deal. Um, it's a tropical. It's a tropical. It's a tropical kale ale. I mean, when, when you sniff it, I mean, you get aromas of grapefruit, pineapple. Um, it's kind of got a nice mango presence, good citrus presence. You can see here, I don't know if you guys can see it on your camera or not, because I always just – I never get to see mine as seen on other people's show, but it's got some pretty decent clarity on it. So not much of a chill haze. Pours out a nice foamy head. Um, the ABV on this one, I think it's only like five something. Not bad at all. So it has ale with grapefruit and passion fruit. So you get all that 5.9 ABV. And it offers a nice, crisp, refreshing pale ale. It's not as heavy on some things. Um, it's got a nice, and it's like some of the other pails, but it's got a nice juiciness to it. Yeah, yeah. John asked that it says that that sounds like a great football beer. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be um, just a nice kickback type beer as well, or um, just relaxing on a day like this when we're like in a 70 degree weather. Great beer to have out in the back deck. Um, it's available year round, they say. So if you can find Boulevard beers and you can find that one, get it now. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen it here. I've never had that. It says fresh exotic fruit. So I do like the juiciness on it. And it's almost like drinking a grapefruit juice, which I'm not huge into grapefruit as much, but it doesn't bother me as much on this beer. I mean, I could drink it as a breakfast drink, and I'd be okay with that. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow, <there you laughs> My boss wouldn't, but I would. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have had this one before from them. I've always enjoyed Boulevard beers. You know they got bought out by uh, Duval. They got bought out by who? Duval. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they're a part of the Duval brand. Them and um, I know. I them and um, the Cooperstown Brewery. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oma, brewery Oma Gang. Yeah, they got bought. Oh, you are really? breaking. You're going in and out oh, of uh, being broken up in audio jet. Oh. oh, he's breaking up a little bit. He's got the crunch factor going. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> not, <laughs> but I don't know if you saw what I was drinking, Rod J, but I have the um, the um, barrel age series of the Yeti Imperial Stout, the stout aged in whiskey barrels. Yeah, nice. You had it with a steak earlier too, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I did the um, sous vide style. I, I put it in a bag, and I brought the water up to about 100 and, around 130, 35 degrees, and okay. I put, and I cooked it for an hour in that water, and then you can either do it on a grill or a or a um, or a searing it in a pan. I mean, you can just crust it for about four or five minutes, and it is delicious. Nice. All you gotta do. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm gonna grab a beer and see if anybody's seen this one before. All right. <laughs> All right. Here, hang on, man. I'll be right back. And the bottle here says that its suggested food pairings are. Grilled porterhouse steak, but Val, yep. that Val Dion blue, which I guess is blue cheese, um, vanilla cheesecake, and brownies. Now, I did have this with the steak today, and it's pretty good with the steak. I think it's still a little bit too sweet, and I, I think it's too sweet with the steak, and I think it's just a little bit too, um, I think it's a f more of a full bodied, more full bodied the beer is than the steak was. So so it sort of clashed a little bit, not horribly. I wouldn't necessarily think of imperial stouts or bar or even maybe barley wines with steak. I wouldn't necessarily go that route. Maybe a lower ABV like Guinness or um, 
other things like that, more like maybe a lower ABV milk stout. So you're thinking this Eric talking about barley wines. I'm gonna show you this beer. I got no, a I couple of one Asian barley wine and one Asian bourbon barrels. I'm gonna show you the barley wine. Has anybody ever seen one of these bad boys? Uh uh. Kilter. Kilter. Never have. Where are they out of? Well, he's up. Uh, hang on a minute. I don't have my bifocals on, so I will tell you. Okay. St. John, Indiana. Can't say we can brand. Brewed and bottled by St. John Malt Brothers, St. John, Indiana. Interesting. We was up in Indianapolis yesterday for my little girl's cheer competition, and uh, we had about uh, oh, six hours to kill before the uh, final one, and uh, we went hunting, and I seen this, and I – my wife, I didn't buy this. My wife did. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Appreciate that. That one they'll pay it for. So, and what else you got to show? Oh, I got. A, how, how many beers you want me to show? Well, I think <laughs> I have another one to show. Oh, uh -oh. I do. But I'll, keep it, I'll keep it in the back. So, okay. Oh, I'll put it on. I'll oh, put it on. oh, you've been waiting to find a time to drink that. I know, Jean. I know. I'm I'm holding off on this one as well as a little colder. No, I'm no, holding no, off no, on no, this no. one as well. I no, mean, no. last night, Eric, it was yeah. very chilly here in Mobile, and I really want to crack this one open right here. This one, really? not not the old recipe. I'm going to do a review of it, but this one right here, the 1050. Yep. Hey, I'll tell you what, we, we got, uh, I've had death by coconut a bunch of times, but Good. we got, uh, when it was out in Colorado, I had a buddy that lived out there and brought it to us, but uh, now it's uh, it's made its way to Indiana. We was up there in Indianapolis yesterday. My wife bought a four pack of it, so if you've never had death by coconut by them, oh my God, that's a freaking phenomenal beer. Yeah. And and uh, Rod J, this is yo, what we're going to be drinking next week. I got my beer right here. You got your pumpkin already? All right. The Wild Hog Pumpkin Ale <laughs> from Stevens Point Brewery in Wisconsin. Never heard of them. Yeah. We All got right. them here in Mobile. I guess they made an agreement with Alabama for us to get these beers here. So, Do you have a hard time finding a lot of different craft beers in Alabama? I do. I do. Some of the stuff that you and Jay and Rod Jay and, and, um, and John Sharon and, and, you know, and Maria Devon get may some of them, I would say about 50% of those beers that you guys review, mm -hmm. we get down here, 15% of it, where most of you probably get maybe at, at best, maybe 25 Maybe up to fifty percent. We don't. We don't get any of those beers here. I'm just wondering if in Alabama it, it really, really has the market to really sell a lot of craft beer. Well, here's the I thing: mean, like Alabama, Birmingham is actually listed as one of the new, basically meccas in the country. Yeah, out of Birmingham, right. loaded with craft beer. Hmm. Right, I, but I, most well, of those beers, Jay. I mean, uh, Rod Jay is pretty much sold in the state. You know. Yeah. I've, I've, we got we got some friends of ours that, that are from Alabama, and they go down there all the time. They bring back some phenomenal beers from Alabama. It's like, oh my god! Some of the beers they bring back from there is just like, wow. Yeah, They're it awesome. sounds like somebody needs to convince somebody to open up more craft beer establishments or good <laughs> stores in Mobile because there are none, except for the fact that Rouse's has your bank account on hand. And you just pretty much. much. <laughs> <laughs> Put it pretty on my much, Eric. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, well, guys, I'm gonna jump off here because I gotta eat and go to bed. So, hey, John, right. I ask, John, before you jump off, I want to ask you something real fast. Yeah. Can I ask you something real fast? Yeah. He's ready. You were saying ready. that they have some port wines that are very expensive. Yeah. At, well, we don't live too far from a place called Huber Winery that makes like wine and bourbon and all kinds of stuff. But they make a port wine; it's freaking phenomenal. And actually, we was at uh, Carmel, Indiana yesterday at a winery that uh, their winery is 
it's the only Indiana winery that is owned by a place in Napa Valley that make a port wine. But you're saying, but I'll tell you what, I'm a big fan of port wines, and they're. I do review on port wine sometimes. Better than Taylor, huh? Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. John, what uh, Braxton were you drinking? I was drinking the uh, October Fuel. Oh, okay. Yeah, they've, been, right. they've been pushing that one. Well, have a good night. I know you got to go to sleep. I just wanted to ask you about that. I know they have cheap port wines and they have some yeah. that are extremely expensive. Yes. Yeah. If you want to do a review on one night, let me know. We'll do a port wine review. Oh, I will let you know that, and we'll get together on that chalada thing. Yeah, we will. We will. So, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Are you too, man. Good day. Like Roger, glad, glad we got to hang out for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, John, that wooden Casper was open in, like, November 12th up here. So yeah. they actually just contacted me back about coming out maybe this week to get a pre uh, free preview of everything and check them out. Right. So there hopefully I'll see some video to upload from that. Yeah. Hey, we're having a Bo and Luke day at Against the Grain. Uh, oh, Against yes, the Grain makes some good beers. Yeah. Citra, yeah. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> come down sometime. Hey, if you come down this way sometime, hook me up, me and you, and uh, have some. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, sounds good, guys. So, I'll see you later. All right. Have a good night. Cheers. Bye. Bye. So, um... Um, Rajay, Rajay is yeah. drinking on some Boulevard Brewing Tropical Pale Ale. What would you, uh, what, what, what are your final thoughts and opinions? What would you rate that beer? Well, for me, I actually, um, it's funny you say that. I went to a new basic type of rating system. Oh, so, okay. still a five point system, but I feel like things were a little, a little too overcomplicated because many people do different things. So now it's, if I give something a five, it's a must try. If it's a four, it's a recommend. Three solid, two is okay, and a one is no thanks. So sure, okay. I like that. I like that system. I mean, it's simple, simple sales and simple is easy, right? So I'm a simple kind of guy. <laughs> I'm a simple man. That's a song. Simple man. Um, That's right. Leonard Skinner. Okay. Yeah. So this one is three point seven five is what I would give it. Um, very solid for a pale ale. Pretty much at a recommendation level, except if someone doesn't like too much of the grapefruit because it brings that juiciness. I'm not sure they're going to definitely want to enjoy a lot of these. Interesting. But if, you do, but if you do like the juiciness like that, then it's actually a pretty good beer that I would recommend. Yeah, apparently they, they that beer is in collaboration with Cigar City Brewing. Oh, nice. And that's what the website says. I need to get close. I need to get some Cigar City at some point. Yeah, I don't. we don't get any of that in Massachusetts. I think the farthest north they've gone is the state of New York. Yeah, I bought, I bought a good amount of that stuff when I went to St. Petersburg, Florida uh, in August. They get that world-class reputation on all the beer rating websites. It's very good. Yeah. That's like Allagash and a few of the other ones out there get. Yeah, Allagash, it kind of reminds me of this Oak Age Imperial Yeti. It's like a yeah. $20 bottle. Not that I've ever bought these big bottles from um, Great Divide, but... Allagash is the same exact way. You pay like twenty plus dollars if you want to get a bomber from them. So I never do that. That's and a it, heck I, of a lot of money. That's a heck of. Yeah, if I do, like I said earlier, before Rajay showed up, if I do buy a bottle like this and I do spend the money, either I'm gonna split the cost with some friends of mine, or I'm gonna buy it very rarely on occasion for a very special purpose or reason. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to go. And I don't mean to. Uh, I don't mean to um, start dissing here, uh, review under the influence of Jordan, but he likes <laughs> all those brewery beers, and they're really, really expensive to buy as well. Yeah. I just can't I can't justify doing that all the time. And I know Jay's a guy in the beer community that will back me up on this. You can find, not saying that this isn't good because it is really, really awesome, but you can find really good beers at any price range if you look. You don't That's have to just spend a high dollar on to get a good product. Yeah, and I can back that up because I just drank two this weekend that were cheap and they were very good and they had a lot of intricate flavors. Mm -hmm. And and I had some documents to back up the fact that they were not mm -hmm. just slung together. Oh, I'm sure some people have come at me, but um, yeah, I, I I just I just don't I, I just don't buy and drink craft beer for the sake of um, you know, showboating some bottle label and how much money I spent on the beer. No, no I, drank, I just drank Miller High Life, and previous to that, I drank Path, 
Pabst Blue Ribbon. Mm -hmm. I think those two beers, are dynamite beers. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel about it. They have a um, lot of interesting flavors. I think it's about setting your price points for sure, or what right. your expectation. Right. Like, you have a limit. Yeah, you have to if put the limit. If I come on the internet and I'm drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon and um, Miller High Life, it's not establishing street credibility. <laughs> it shouldn't. But, but then again, I never was looking to establish street credibility in the craft beer community. Yeah. Yesterday, I did a double down video, which won't be posted for a few days, I don't think. Okay. And now you say what you want. Come at me all, all hard. <laughs> Come at me, son. <laughs> Come at me as hard as you want. <laughs> but you know what? I bought two oil cans for $3, two for $3 plus tax. I did the, a double down on Foster's Premium Ale, formerly known as Foster's Special Bitters. And I did uh, Foster's uh, Lager. <clears throat> Those beers are made with Pride of Ringwood hops. And there's a very detailed uh, discussion of Pride of Ringwood hops on the company's website. Not Foster's, but the company that they buy their hops from. Yeah. And that's why that beer is so distinctive. Well, that well that um that pale ale from from Newcastle that you drank, I what, what was that? What got you interested in doing that that double down with the Foster's ale? You talk about the Newcastle pale ale that came from Scotland. That collaboration Correct. with Caledonian. Yeah. I know you were kind of thinking about it in the back of your mind and trying to compare it to the to the um, premium ale from Foster's. No. What got me interested in doing a double down on those two beers was that they had a special this week, two cans for three dollars. <laughs> so three dollars. <laughs> you get one bud like that John's drink. Dollar ninety nine each or two for three. That. <laughs> to me that's a great deal. I mean a dollar fifty for a twenty five point four ounce can. Exactly. Now look, I drink craft beer all the time. I mean me too. Nobody can come after me and say, oh, you just trumpet those cheap brands because you're a cheap drunk and an idiot. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> that is not true. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's, just say, let's just say for the sake of argument that I am a cheap drunk and an idiot. Nonetheless... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nonetheless, <laughs> I can quit right now. I can quit right now. I can walk, I can walk off just like Donald Trump. Nonetheless, <laughs> there are to back up what Eric said. There are cheap beers that you can buy that are good. I don't want to say cheap. I want to say at all different price points you can find good beer. Right, let me restate. Let, 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 let me restate. Let me restate that. I want to totally retract that. Yeah. What I just said, <laughs> what I just said has been debunked, largely debunked. Uh, what I meant to say was there are value price beers that mm -hmm. you can buy that are quite <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> that are quite enjoyable to drink. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's no uh, stigma or uh, social um, awkwardness involved with drinking very good craft beers of which I have in my fridge. Mm -hmm. So it's like why do we have to be under some kind of a uh, regimen like, oh, you must drink only this? It's like, why couldn't you just have fun and drink all kind of stuff like that? Like, for instance, that Taylor Port wine. Mm -hmm. I know some people are going to roll their eyes when they see that video and say, oh, Lord, he's going mad. But I'm saying, <laughs> I say, well, I say, well, it's get, it gets worse because there's a, a Taylor Tawny Port. And that's also 529. So you'll probably see that video sooner than later. It's um, it's videos, people. It's yeah. YouTube videos about beverages and drink. You know, all of the, you and, and, and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know? All of this talk about the cheaper beers and the cheaper price beers um, brings us to um, Jean the TV Rambler. He is drinking uh, Bud Light, and you never got a chance to explain. Uh, the Bud Light wow. situation. Not that we all don't know about Bud Light, but what's your uh, feeling on it? Still drinking it now today? I am well, to what it is what it is. It is a light beer. Um, it is enjoyable. It is the best selling beer in the world, and what I have pretty much in the house right now, and uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. Now you saw the three beers I had earlier. I I, I post. I just showed. 
a pumpkin ale, which I'm going to do with Rod J next week. Yep. I got the 1050. I have the All Rasputin, which I'm going to, you know, which I'll do a review of. And I did a review today, which I'm going to post probably uh, more than likely post this evening of the uh, Goodwood Red Wine Barrel Sasson farm, Farmhouse Ale. Ooh, nice. nice. Oh, man. Yeah. Ten Fighty. Ten Fighty is gangster, man. I love that beer. Ten Fighty is, it is the best. And you know what? Tonight it's supposed to dip into the 40s. I think I might crack open that can and sip outside. That might be a good beer to drink with the Walking Dead premiere. Ooh. Oh, yeah. but I'm sorry because I can't watch. I'm sorry I can't watch a fake zombie TV show because I gotta watch a real NFL game that counts. But anyway, it doesn't oh, what? Seattle, Arizona. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's not gonna be a know. good game at all. <laughs> Even this game I'm watching right now, New England, Pittsburgh. I'm like, oh, fa. Okay, look, well, look. I don't want to get all theoretical. And it's not the beer talking, in the, but what I'm trying to tell you, and I'm going to drink some hot tea. Yes, that's <laughs> all I'm going to drink next is hot tea. Believe it or not, I am not a confirmed. But anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I do not want to spend time watching fiction when I can watch something that is real. You know what I mean? Like, I could watch a movie, but nobody wins a movie. Practically, movies and, and some television programs are more entertaining than this year's NFL season. Sorry. It's boring. I agree. I do it's agree. Sorry, I'm, NFL. Sorry. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. It's boring. Blame as Trump as and Clinton for that. So. Yeah, blame, blame Goodell. League is yeah, good. that's true. Blame both. <laughs> also, Canada. blame the matchups. The matchups are not being that good, too. It was pretty so. bad, yeah. What did South Park say? Blame Canada. All right. No. Boring. Yeah. As boring as the NFL can be and we all know it can be dreadfully boring. Mm -hmm. I still am going to watch that over a show that isn't real. That well, yeah, is pretty good. good. I'll be watching it. I'm waiting for you, Negan Kills. Yo, oh, yeah. And then Rod J singing, he doesn't want to come to my hangouts because he doesn't want to be part of it. It's not that. It's <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> You throw a shade my way? You throw a shade my way? No. If you don't want to fight, I'll pay the $5 to watch it on pay-per-view. No, I'm trying to play. No, I'm trying to explain the situation. Here's the situation, folks. I want to explain this to the two or 300,000 people watching this right now. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, all right, when they started, I mean a little kid, ever since I was 13 years old, <laughs> And we got cable TV. They started showing all these games at night. So I started watching these games. So then all year long, I'll say, oh, the season's coming. And I, I'm a very bad nerd. I'll admit that. I'll sit down and write the whole, the whole college football schedule. I write it out by hand for all the teams that I follow. And I'm talking about the whole Southeastern Conference, American Athletic Conference, and all this. So it's kind of sad. But I write the whole schedule out week by week. And I look forward to the whole season. So I'm thinking about this all summer. So then I want to do the the hangouts, right? And then I say, oh, but the game is on. How can I watch the game? And then I feel bad. It's like, why would I wait for football all year and then I don't watch it? I don't know. It's it's insane. Like a, a nut says those kind of things. But I want you to know, Rod, that I'm not trying to ditch the, the hangouts. You know what I mean? I, I felt so funny about it. Like I said, Rod's going to think I'm trying to dodge his hangouts or I don't want to participate. But that's not the truth. <laughs> Well, you like to just watch football. I mean, I'm a big football person, but the games have just been so horrible that – and I got fantasy players out there that still just like oh, – yeah, they're the so NFL. bad. Terrible season, the NFL. I mean, so I'm like – I'm trying to watch some of the games and it's just like, why? Why even watch some of them? Besides maybe like Tom I woke up to I woke up this morning to the Giants game and it was horrible. Mm -hmm. And I've got Todd Gurley on my team, and I still struggle watching it. Besides maybe Tom <laughs> Brady and maybe Russell Wilson, I can't think of any other quarterbacks that are that enticing and that are, are that interesting to watch this year. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure Cam, Cam's always good. Uh, the rest of the team yeah. always lets him down. Let well, yeah. Drew, well, Drew, Drew Brees. Drew Brees is always good. Oh, yeah. Not good enough today. Yeah. Here's proof of the sickness. Here's a, here's a notebook. It's got all the schedule written out. I got to write the scores down. You can't just download that and print it. Eric. Uh, <laughs> I, 
I like the passion. He likes the passion to write it. You have to write it down. This is being recorded. Uh, but anyway, I've got him going back. Vegas. <laughs> Sorry. I've got it's it going back years and years. I've got it going back years and years. I've got all my predictions every year. And it goes back to 1982. I know it's it's a sickness. I understand that. But um, So who did you predict for the Super Bowl this year? Uh, let me see. Ooh. You know, it's a sickness. But you could say that hanging out and Arizona. doing your hangouts is a sickness in a way. You could, you no, could no Arizona's that. going to no Super Bowl. Arizona, at the time, they were the favorite. To me, I had Arizona before I, off, before I get off of this wonderful hangout, um, I have all my predictions going back for years. By the way, I keep my records. Um, okay, I have a prediction. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was okay, that? You, you had Carolina going back. Oh, <laughs> they, they suck. I'm gonna lose about a thousand subscribers. Yeah, boys, <laughs> Patriots. Let's go. <laughs> well. <laughs> Super Bowl 51. <laughs> Carolina over Kansas City. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, Kansas City played well today. And you know what? Carolina's not around in the NFC South. You just never know what could happen. I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> they beat New Orleans today, so Kansas yeah, City's still in the mix. Keep bringing that up. Um, <laughs> You know, I predicted Green Bay to win the NFC North. I predicted Carolina to win the NFC South and go 12 and 4. Oh, what an atrocity. Um, <laughs> they I'm, could go to run. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. I predicted Dallas to go 11 and 5 and win the East. I predicted Arizona to go 12 and 4 and win the West. You don't know. You don't know. I predicted Pittsburgh Pittsburgh to go 11 and 5 and win the a AFC North. Crazy, huh? Oops. I predict. Yeah. Oops. They still could. They still I predict, could. I, mean, I predicted New England to go twelve and four and win the AFC East. They still can. I pre uh what a I haven't looked at this since y'all brought this up. I predicted Indianapolis <laughs> Indianapolis to go ten and six and win the AFC South. Well, they I, still could. And I predicted Kansas City to go twelve and four and win the AFC West. So well, what can I say? It was a bad oh, interesting. Uh well, but that but the whole point of this rant and rave with Ronald is that um <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know that I don't try to ditch people's beer hangouts. I just I do the Wednesday nights. I've been doing that for a good while, and I just it seems like that's a lot. And um, it seems like a week. Y'all ever notice that a week goes by like? Yeah. Pretty very soon, quickly. Like, oh, you know, very like, quickly. Say what happened? What? He's very like, quickly, it goes by just like that. Very quickly, it goes, yeah, just, so it goes by like, just like that. It's like time is racing ahead of me, and I'm just like here watching it go. Woo. You're just thinking of all the things you got to do and how the time is not there to do them all. Right. I mean, I want to do hangouts. I want to do – like the Canadian guys invited me, and then I, I never really wanted to do it, but oh, then I felt – Yeah. I, I felt obligated, and then and then that didn't turn out to work. That didn't work out so well, and then – um. And they got so upset when I quit. <laughs> they were, no, they go angry at me. Like I said, I'm in an you know, awkward position, you know. You mean like an American wouldn't turn their back on someone? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they thought. I think they took it. I think they took it as that I didn't like doing it. And I had some issue. I tried to tell them. I said, "Look, at I wake up at three forty-five in the morning and." Mm -hmm. By the yeah. time Wednesday night at eight o'clock rolls around, I'm tired and, and and I don't know what I'm saying and I'm drinking, and yeah, you want me to drink all this beer and I don't know what I, you start to like. Literally, you don't know what you're saying and you you say the wrong thing and and I'm just dog tired and really, what I really want to do at that time is just go to bed and so I don't want to sound like a big fuddy duddy and a big ninny and a titty baby, but <laughs> but, but that's it. that's the story though. <laughs> well, I like doing the ones with the guys from England, but they're like always on midday. Yeah, they they I think that's a six hour difference. Yeah, so they do it like two o'clock and it's like I'm in the office. Yeah, I, I talked to them about that and what they told me was they would actually prefer if no Americans joined. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, <laughs> they did. They said, Well, 
it's a UK beer reviewer, so they really wanted to be British beer reviewers. But they said they would they would tolerate one American joining a week. <laughs> they always ask me back, so I guess maybe I'm not American. <laughs> I, what wow. I told them was, I said, well, uh, no, I wasn't offended. I said, if it's about British beer reviewers, then that's who should be on it. Yeah, don't invite any of the don't invite anybody else from around the world then. And on Tuesdays at 2 o'clock, that's actually the best time when I could do it. But I told him, no, I'm not going to join because it's, it's not appropriate to the, your theme. Exactly. But, but um, it was fun. I, 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 I'll, I'll probably join again, Rod J. I just that, I was explaining that's the reason why. Yeah, I usually get a lot of questions on the American beers, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Because a lot of people over there ask about it because they're just starting to get them now. Mm -hmm. They're getting theirs like a little bit late, so their flavors aren't as strong as ours. Same thing here, huh? We get a lot of British beers that are yeah. so old. Which is also funny. Like, we like um, the speckle head and the crafty head and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of the guys over there, or a good amount of the ones I've spoken to, aren't as big over there on that one. Um, oh, yeah. They, it's they kind of like, like the people over here in Budweiser. I've, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that old speckled head. Not at all. I, li I like old speckled head. No. I That's like it. Head. I don't want to do the golden head. I had the old golden, I had the old crafty, I had the old speckled, and I had the old, uh, what's the other one? There's the fourth one. The well, there's like, there's like seven of them. Yeah. And I sent, a, I sent a link to somebody the other day about it. It added to it, huh? Yeah. Well, well, I had the original full lineup. Um, I was talking to this English guy, this guy from Wales five years ago. I old Hoppy in, Hen. Oh, yeah, Old Hoppy Hen. I was talking yeah. I was in Wales, and I was talking to a guy from Wales, and he was telling me, um, oh, yeah, we like to go out drinking, you know, in Cardiff, the capital. And I said, well, uh, well that's really interesting, I said, because I love to do beer reviews and everything. I said, what do you drink over there? You know, I'm thinking he's going to give me all these exotic beers. Oh, he says, oh, just Budweiser. <laughs> just Budweiser. <laughs> hey, hey, isn't that interesting, Jay, and guys, that, you know, those folks who – think you're they're drinking stuff from you know from overseas that is very common as what we consider standby beers that to them their standby beers are the ones that we drink Budweiser and Bud yeah, Light. This guy, yeah this guy in Wales this guy in Wales who's like a big beer drinker you know this guy was like a major beer drinker he would put me under the table Woo. yeah but I mean, he was like really into the sports culture, going to games. He flew to Miami to go see the Marlins. So it was kind of interesting, you know, this guy. But he said him and his friends that when they drank, they like to drink Budweiser. So I was fascinated by that. And I didn't dress him down about it. I didn't say, oh, well, how dare you drink Budweiser? You know, don't you realize? Don't you realize? You know, I didn't say all that. I was just saying, I was just thinking, wow, you know, it's interesting, you know. Yeah, I think for me, I think I told Eric, I got Virginia, I told, or I told somebody, I was like, I think I'm done with it was both of us, you North done American that. lagers. I just don't get anything out of them. They're just like nothing for me on them. It's just boring stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I drink them and all the time. Snob, it makes me a snob, but it's just like nothing it offers for me anymore in any of them. A snob is somebody that will have your attitude and then talk down to everybody who does like them. Yeah, because I think beers, I think you're right, or beers can fit for different situations, but it's just, maybe it's because of where I'm at, I get some really good deals on some of the craft beers, so that plays into it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I went into, when I got this uh, six-pack for five ninety nine. they also had in there some cases for twelve ninety nine of some of the craft beers, and so I don't have to go down to get, you know, one of the other value beers, because we have so many other ones that are good craft beers in this area that they're always trying to move, so... But you don't look down on me for drinking all that stuff I drink, though. No, no, I don't look down on anybody for drinking. If it's good, if it's beer, it's good to you. I say drink it. I just feel like for what I'm going to get out of that beer, you know, calorie wise, carb wise, whatever that, I want it to be at least a decent taste in it for my palate. They're not always a decent taste in beer. Now I'll go to a few golf outings a year, and I'll give like free Bud or free Bud Light, and I'll drink it with no problem because you know it's part of what you get there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just something I don't go out and seek anymore is, is really what it is. If I go to Mexican restaurants, then, yeah, I'll drink a Dos Equis Dark because that's what they're going to have there. Um, we just had one of our Mexican restaurants finally at Craft Beer, which is actually one of the Braxton beers that John was drinking. And that's freaking awesome because it was an IPA and it goes great with spicy food. Mm -hmm. So I have been on them about trying to get a craft beer that they finally had and just like, 
they're really selling a lot of good beer from it. So, hey, you know what I always tell people? You may as well drink what you enjoy drinking. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what it's all about. And one more thing before I get off of this. Okay. Uh, over the last five years, six years, I started doing the video reviews. I have had some conflicts with some people, but I think it was them, not me. I really believe that because they would get so like so like caught up in it. Yeah, and exactly. I would tell them, and, and they would want to argue and get so angry. And I was telling them, I said, "Well, wait a minute." I said, "What are we on? Some kind of quest? It's like we're trying to accomplish something here." Yeah. How do you, how do you get angry at people over food and beverages? I don't understand that. <laughs> the, quest, the quest for me is to try the next great beer. And I'm Thank never you. gonna ever do that because the next beer is always just that. There's always another beer that's gonna be the next great one. I understand right. that, but it's a quest. It's a goal within the hobby. That's what it's that, all about, yeah. guys. That's what makes it enjoyable to me. Some people yeah. act like it's. They're almost like they're gonna change this planet because they're drinking some beer from Liechtenstein. Nobody cares that you drink beer. They just want your money, right? I don't understand. I don't understand this animosity issue. You know, like I don't know. I have a hang up about that. Like when when you stop talking to people because you you disagreed over beverages. I don't know. I got a problem. Now. I got a real. Well, it's like an issue if somebody's looking down on someone else because of what they drank or whatever. It's just it's stupid. You know, it's just that's what they drink. You know, it's. I'm it's glad that. Do. I'm glad that we in this community, and I know we had a little bit of an issue the other day, and we seem to resolve those issues really quickly because we're I'm all glad really, y'all did. I'm yeah, glad we're really good friends in this community. We may not physically have have gotten together in person, but we've done these kind of reviews and these kind of examinations. We talked yeah. to each other enough times that we know each other pretty well. I think throughout Wait, the some of us, week. some of us have gotten together personally, but um. But you know what I'm trying to say is that I think we all understand each other enough to know that when something seems kind of off kilter, that that that's not you. That's not you talking. That's the beer talking. We know. We when know that little problem, when that little issue came up between you and someone else, so I won't. Yeah. And it was a giant misunderstanding from both parties, which was great because now we instantly, I mentioned it instantly to the party. <laughs> this was recently? Party. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And I must have missed that one, man. Thank God. <laughs> I, 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 I guess the other member of our beer drinking community thought I physically had some kind of problem or issue that was going on in my life, which is not. So he was very happy that things are going well. And, you know, that's the great thing about this community. People yeah. apparently look out for one another, which is quite awesome. But before I get off, I was glad that at least the person came to me and I could be a mediator. And yeah. I said, I'm glad you talked to me before it blew out to be some kind of major problem. And, and I've noticed that in the past where they have these, what you call beer fights. It's because these people don't communicate. They're like, say, oh, he offended me or she offended me. It's like, did, mm -hmm. you, talk, did you talk to the person? Right. I, it seems like for me, me, Jay, Jay Ronald Terrio always has to be the mediator. I don't mind being the mediator because I want everybody to get along. But they'll come to me, oh, so-and-so upset me, whatever. And I'll say, wait a minute, what? I said, well, did you talk to the person? Oh, no. I was so offended. I said, well... I think a lot of people get divorced because they didn't even talk because I actually literally knew a man and a woman. This is a true story. I swear to you. They got divorced and they didn't want to get divorced. This is a crazy story, but I think it happens more than just this one time. Huh. They got in some argument. You know, people always arguing, right? So um, then the guy packed up his bags and he was telling, he was and both parties talked to me, right? But not together, but one-on-one. -on -one. So the guy was like, I packed my bags and I was walking out and I figured she was going to run out the house behind me and say, don't leave, don't leave. And then he could say, ha ha. All right, I'll come back. I made her run out the house after me. So he got his bags packed and he put them in the car and he's like, I'm out of here. This is over. And she was like, OK, fine. And he's he said he was putting his stuff in the car in the trunk and he's thinking, well, about time for her to come out the house. I'm waiting. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty good place to um to end our little. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, hold on, hold he on. Closed the trunk and he drove off, and she never came out of the house. All right, so then I talked to the lady. And wait, he, did he, did he, and he kept driving. Yeah, because he was waiting for. <laughs> uh oh, the story continues, folks. He was like, I wasn't going back and and grovel, you know. So then the woman tells me, Oh yeah, he packed his bags 
and I didn't want him to leave. I, I was glad to be married, but he thought I was going to go out the house and ask him to come back. And I just waited around for him to come back in and say, okay, your show is over. Come back in. And she said, and I just waited, waited. And he drove off and I was like, wow, I can't believe you really left. So, so what I'm saying is here's two people. They didn't want to get divorced. Right. But instead of communicating, like, here's the problem. They were just sort of like going to wait each other out. And so they waited each other out. All right. Until the, until now one of them died. And so they, they got divorced. And so I'm, I'm, I'm relating that to the beer story. I think a lot of people in the beer world get in disagreements and they could have resolved it very quickly if they just talked to each other. Mm -hmm. That's all it's about. Talk it out. Work yeah. it out. And I think that's a fantastic place to end our discussion today for whoever watched our little review on whatever we're drinking during week seven of the NFL. I appreciate you stopping by the Massachusetts Beer Reviews. I appreciate uh, Louisiana Beer Reviews, Jay and T uh, Beer Rambler, uh, John, Pierre, H. Pierre, and John Sharon for joining and Rajay from Rajay's Beer Adventures and Beer Ventures. He's got a show on when a Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, and this week's beer will be what? Pumpkin Ales. Mm. I got one. And <laughs> Louisiana Beer Reviews, Jay Terriot has a review show on 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, 6.30 on Louisiana Time. So join those guys, hit those guys up if you want to do some beers and review and talk about beers with those guys. But until then, until next time on that, I have been Thomas Metal 75. And I, as I always say at the end of my reviews, keep tasting those great beers. Cheers. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining, everybody. Good night. Good night.